Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Well, as this is our 12,400th episode special, we're going to bring you an hour-long episode. And I've chosen something a little bit unusual. Anthony Adverse was a very well-known historical epic novel during the golden age of radio. It's referenced uh, every now and again. When I first listened to this Studio One adaptation of a portion of the novel, it really occurred to me that there were a lot of elements of the detective story, as Anthony Adverse was essentially tasked with solving a mystery involving some uh, missing uh, ship owners as well as a missing collection. My other reason for choosing to do it now is that it does feature uh, Bud Collier, uh, here referred to as Clayton Collier, which is his uh, given name, but uh, he was known for uh, many things on radio, uh, but most notably playing Superman. And we've been doing the old-time radio Superman show for the past 10 years, and we are nearing the end of that run at the end of February. So I thought this would be a good time to trot out Anthony Adverse. As you're going to hear, uh, Studio One had a definite production style, and I think you're going to enjoy the next hour uh, program. Uh, the original air date on today's episode was October the 14th of 1947. Here from Studio One is Anthony Adverse. This is Studio One at CBS. <laughs> Senorita Neveta, you come see Mom Bibi. Mom Bibi, I come to you for help. What is it you seek? Oh, great wizard. There is a man recently arrived in Cuba from the old world. A man whom I love, but who even now has gone to a rendezvous with another. You wish charm. Make this man love you. I want a charm that will make him my slave. With a dramatic moment from Anthony Adverse by Hervey Allen, CBS invites you to Studio One, a full-hour Columbia feature from the pages of the world's great storytellers. Stories known and loved by millions. And now to introduce tonight's great story, here's the director of Studio One, Fletcher Markle. Anthony Adverse Esquire, a young man whose story captured a million readers 14 years ago and has enjoyed an uninterrupted popularity ever since, comes to our microphone tonight at the age of 26, about to set out for a new world. Like the whole span of his tempestuous life, Anthony's adventures among the slave traders in 18th century Cuba are crowded with romance and tropical intrigue and the bright magic of a youthful quest. As lively as fireworks and as tender as starshine, life with Antony is seldom uneventful. Tonight, in Vincent McConnor's version for listening of Antony's interlude in Cuba, you'll be hearing Clayton Collier in the title role, Mercedes McCambridge as Dolores, Miriam Wolfe as Naleta, and among other divertisements, the songs of Senor Nino Ventura. Lan Adomian has composed a special musical score which takes us first to an Italy of 1796. You wanted to see me, Mr. Bonnefeather? Aye, uh, lad. I'd like a bit of discussion with you. Ah. If it concerns the young lady and the brawl I had last night when I visited a certain tavern... I've heard something of your most recent indiscretions. Magnified and colored far beyond the truth, I fear. It is quite likely. Nevertheless, it is also true that you've been seeing more than a bit of that little actress, the one you called during your sleep. Angela. Oh, she has broken my heart. If I were you, I'd not permit these youthful love affairs to make me melancholy. Oh, why am I so restless? Oh, the times are disturbed. 
All the talk of Napoleon seizing the continent. He lives dangerously, this Corsican. Antony, as your guardian, I've been aware of your great restlessness for some time. And I believe that I've found a solution for it. Oh? You should go away. Change this place for another. Leave my beloved Italy. Aye, you need to go out into the world and prove yourself to the world. And to yourself. Antony, I want you to go on a journey and collect a large debt that is owed to me. Thousands of pounds. Thousands? I'm sending you to Cuba. Cuba? An island noted, noted for, for its beautiful, beautiful women. women. I have heard... Never mind what you've heard. Listen to me now. You may have known already that we've had extensive dealings with the firm of Gallego and Son in Havana. I have checked many an invoice for cargoes which we shipped them. In the past, they paid their debts with great promptness. But for more than a year now, I've been unable to collect so much as a Spanish dollar from them. Today, I received a letter from my agent, Carlo Chibo, telling me that the Gallegos have disappeared. Both of them, father and son. This begins to sound most intriguing. What prevented Senor Chibo from writing you sooner? As you shall see when you meet him, he's a great, fat, lazy procrastinator. An excellent businessman, but not disposed to work. You already have passage for me? Aye, lad. The brig Wampanoag, out of the town of Providence, which is in Rhode Island. Captain Elisha Joram expects you aboard ship as soon after sunset as possible. You must slip out to sea undetected. All ships have been ordered to remain in the harbor. How can I ever thank you for all you've done, Mr. Bonifather? By collecting this debt for me in Havana. I will not enjoy saying farewell. Let us never say farewell, lad. We shall have a glass of wine together, but no farewells. I cannot abide them. June 9th, 1796. Dear Mr. Bonnyfeather, I want to write and tell you of my voyage. The night of our farewell, two bearded Yankee sailors rowed me out to the Wampanoag. And in the darkness, the brigantine slipped out of the harbor of Livorno in a following wind with nothing but her jet set. The cannon on the shore sent several shots after us. But Captain Joram made sail and the ship rushed forward into the open sea. It was many weeks later when I had my first sight of the new world. The long, blue coasts of Cuba. That night, Captain Joram and his wife gave a little dinner to celebrate our safe arrival. As we dined, the three of us in the captain's cabin, a young seaman sat cross-legged on a sea chest and played a guitar. Mr. Adverse, it's been a long voyage. And I give you now a toast to safe arrival in Cuba. We'll talk in the morning. I drink to your seamanship, Captain Joram. A filthy climate it is in Cuba, from my point of view. <laughs> uh, here, rant, lad. Uh -uh. My wife and her memories in Nantucket. Huh. The heat makes me yearn for cranberry bog and fish chowder. Uh, as for me, I'll take the tropics and rum. <laughs> you have made my voyage most pleasant. Is there not some way I can repay your kindness after we land in Havana? There is. Aye, there is. Escort my wife through all the churches in Havana. The churches? It's her uh, New England conscience lad. She's devoted to visiting cemeteries and cathedrals. We shall hire a carriage, Mrs. Joram. And you will see them all. Well, now that'd be just lovely. Uh, the boy here is from Cuba. He can tell you about the sights of Havana. Ain't that right, Juan? Si, senor. He's uh, heard that you live in Havana, where he was born. He wishes to enter your service. Does he, indeed? He sees himself decked out handsome in fine clothes, living the life of a gentleman. You there, Juan. I play the guitar well, yes? <laughs> he does not wait to be complimented. Senor Adverse, I know Havana. Everything about Havana, I know. You'd like me to be your boy, eh? I arrange everything. Good. I leave it all in your hands. Captain, you will be able to reach me through Senor Carlo Chibo, who represents my guardian in Cuba. Aye, I know him well. Many's the time I've got my stores from him. <laughs> Look out for that fat gentleman. He's a bit of a shark, if he ain't your friend. I trust that Senor Chibo will be my friend. A tower with a banner flying rose out of the sea as our ship moved into shore. By evening, we were in close enough to see the sulfur puff of the sunset gun from El Moro. Between a setting sun and a rising moon, we slipped into the great bay. 
Tier above tier of batteries frowned down upon us from the turrets of the fort. The crew did a clog dance on deck as we glided along the waterfront. Havana was flooded in moonlight by the time I went ashore to pay my respects to Senor Chibo. And I should have had someone meet you at the ship, Senor Adverse, if I had known you were arriving tonight. A glass of Chibo's punch? Thank you. I would enjoy that. For 15 years, I have been the honored agent in Havana for the House of Bonifacio. Here you are. Senor. Thank you. Your uh, guardian tells me in this letter that uh, you are to be considered as a junior member of the firm. I am to represent Mr. Bonifather personally in this matter of the Gallego debt. Ah, the Gallego debt. In vain have I tried to collect it. Senor Adverse, I believe in first impressions, so I am disposed to be candid with you. This Gallego debt is uh, somewhat involved. Indeed. What manner of business did the Gallegos run? My guardian seemed vague on that subject. The Gallegos, it would appear, sold precious stones, ivory, and other African imports. But there was also a rumor that they dealt in slaves. Slaves? Well, that's a different tune. No one has ever seen them deliver a slave here in Cuba. But there was always that rumor. When the Gallegos, father and son, were alive... Alive? Do you think, then, that they are dead? In this violent land, when a man disappears, one must suppose him to be dead until he is proved otherwise. And the two Gallegos have been missing for more than a year. Tell me, senor, who manages their business affairs? Their agent, a rascal who calls himself Ferdinando. Ferdinando, eh? Senor, you are to stay here with me. I have a tremendous house and many servants. What, senor Chibo? I should consider it an insult if you lived elsewhere. A slur upon the Chibo hospitality. Tomorrow, we shall relax and do nothing. I must help you to adjust yourself to our tropical way of life. But apparently a murder has been committed. Still, one must not distress the digestion. Presently, we shall eat a tremendous dinner. What will be accomplished? Much. We shall have lived another few hours comfortably. No one can do more. Now, let us have another glass of Chibo's punch. The prettiest tombs I've ever seen, Mr. Adverse. I am happy that you've enjoyed the graveyards of Havana, Mrs. Joram. <gasps> Never seen prettier, even in Italy. And this cathedral. <gasps> It's mighty beautiful. Uh, from the way people are gathering, it would appear that there's to be some sort of service. You think maybe a wedding? I'm mighty partial to weddings. <gasps> Look at all them jewels and laces and such uniforms. Yes. <gasps> Pesky mosquitoes. You'd think the critters would know enough to stay out of church. I, I wonder if there's any more cemeteries. Uh, no. According to the list Juan made out for me, we've seen them all. Shall we stand here by the door and watch the people come out of the cathedral? Yes, that'd be real nice. My, don't they look handsome. Land sakes, look at that girl. I, I didn't know Spaniards had pale gold hair like that. Uh, do you see her, Mr. Adverse? I do, indeed. Oh, and Mr. Adverse, look over here. Uh, what is it, Mrs. John? The prettiest statue of an angel. Excuse me just a minute. I must see it. I love statues of angels. Senor... I believe that I address a newly arrived visitor to Havana. That is true, sir. It is my business to know every distinguished guest, and I feel certain that you must be Senor Adverse. I am, indeed. And I am the governor. Your Excellency. May I present my niece, Senorita Dolores de la Fuente? My honor, Senorita. Senor Adverse? Dolores, if you will wait a moment with Senor Adverse here in the shade, I will call our carriage. I shall be happy to wait here with Senor Adler. I will be only a moment, Senor. A pleasure, Your Excellency. And so, Senor, how do you like Havana? Oh, I find it a magnificent city. Exciting and strange. As strange as your name. Dolores de la Fuente. Dolores of the Fountain. It is such a strange name. It is a fitting name. A name... Flashed with stars. Your speech is touched with poetry, senor. As though you too might be Spanish. 
We Spanish are great lovers of beautiful words. We are fond of dreams and of legends. This, this meeting of ours seems to me like a dream. Oh, yes, it is this place. This cathedral is filled with dreams and with legends. There is a very old one about a young girl who met a young man here by the statue of the little angel. I hope it is a happy story. Oh, yes, it's a legend of love. And as this young girl and the young man met here, a small white dove perched itself on the statue. And this was an omen, Señor. And even today when lovers meet near the statue of the little angel, it is said that they will find happiness if a small white dove perches itself on the statue. I am glad that this is where we first met, Señorita. And I, Señor Advil. Perhaps we shall meet again. Oh, but that is a certainty. Look there. A white dove has only now swooped down to perch itself on the shoulder of the little angel. Oh, yes, senor. We shall meet again. Do sit down, Senor Adver. Gracias, Senor Ferdinando. I regret, Senor, that we are unable to pay our debt to Mr. Bonnie Feather. Then you know my mission in Havana. I knew it even before you arrived, Senor. I see. Senor Chibo has already told me that the affairs of Gallego and Son are in a somewhat precarious state. Or worse, they are disastrous. When do you anticipate the debt may be paid? Who can say, Senor? Believe me, I would like nothing better than to see this debt wiped off our books. But even before the Gallegos disappeared, our ships were returning without cargo. From Africa? And elsewhere. Trade is not what it used to be. This surprises me. I have heard that there is never any loss in the slave trade. Slave trade? Why do you say that, senor? Gallego and Son does not deal in slaves. Since my arrival in Havana, I have heard certain rumors. Senor, this is a land of rumors. Come aboard the schooner which arrived from Africa this morning. You will see that our cargo was made up of spices and a few ivory tusks of so little value that they will barely pay for the expense of the voyage. Ferdinando, is this not the senor from the house of Bonifeather of whom we have heard? Your servant, senorita. Senor Adverse, I present my sister... Neleta. We welcome you to Cuba. Ferdinando? Oh, yes, Neleta. I think you should attend in person to the matter of the wages for the seamen. They wait at the pay window. If the matter is pressing, I shall come another time. Oh, do not leave, Senor Adders. My brother will excuse himself, and I, meantime, shall remain. I, I shall attempt in my poor way to entertain you. As you wish, Senorita. Your permission, Senor? Of course. Senorita, is it customary in Havana for a young lady to receive a stranger, unattended, in this manner? No, senor, but I do not like customs. Nor do I. My father was from Barcelona. He, too, was never one to follow customs. You wear your shawl thrown over your arms like the ladies of Barcelona. Oh, you know Barcelona, senor Adverse. I have visited that glorious city. Senorita... I came to discuss business with your brother, but it would seem he wishes to avoid such a conversation. <laughs> you must forgive, Ferdinando. This climate has not improved his disposition. What has it done to your disposition, senor? At the moment, I seem extremely well disposed. Indeed, senor. Then I am pleased. <laughs> got no promise from Ferdinando as to when the debt might be paid? Oh, he avoided my questions, gave me no satisfaction. And I'm inclined to believe that his sister was more than a little interested in our conversation. He is a fox and a rascal. As to her, I have my doubts. She is a beauty, as dark as the night and as unpredictable. A most curious woman, always within sight of her brother, as though she distrusts him. And so do I. So do we all. What am I to do, Senor Chivo? How will I collect this debt? I sit here enjoying the pleasures of my patio, and yet I arrange many things. 
I weave a fine web which extends in all directions, and one direction leads straight to the governor's palace. I am most grateful, Senor Chibo. You are to drive to the palace in my best carriage. And you will accompany me? Oh, no, 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 no. Riding up and down our wretched cobblestones disturbs my digestion. I see. Do you think, Senor, that I will be fortunate enough to see His Excellency's niece? The delicate Dolores with the golden hair? Aye, Dolores of the fountain. Perhaps. Now then, Anthony, I believe that I have discovered a plan that would help you to collect the debt which Gallego and son owes to the house of Bonifat. Excellent. However, the governor's permission must be given or the plan is impossible. Oh? Tomorrow afternoon, you will point out to His Excellency that there is a ship in the harbor. It is named the Ariostatica and is owned by... Your Excellency, this schooner, the Ariostatica, is the property of Gallego and Son. Aye, Senor Advers, it is their property. This ship makes voyage after voyage to Africa, yet, curiously, its cargoes are so small and unprofitable that Senor Ferdinando professes himself unable to meet expenses, much less discharge his debts. As governor, senor, I, too, am most interested in the firm of Gallego and Son. You see, they also owe a considerable debt to the Cuban government. Perhaps I can help you to collect that debt. Uh, you have a proposal? The Ariostatica sails for Africa next week. Mm, that is true. Senor Chibo has suggested that I sail aboard her in order to determine why a profitable cargo was never brought back from these African voyages. Indeed, an investigation should be most revealing. I will see to it that a valuable cargo is shipped back from Africa... I will guard it and I will sail with it back to Cuba. That way I can check the ship's inventory when it unloads here and guarantee that nothing is missing. An excellent idea. One cargo of ivory would pay off the Gallagos' debt to the House of Bonifeather, which you represent, and to the government of Cuba, which I represent. One cargo would pay both debts. Only... I? I would have to sail aboard the Ariostatica as a representative of your excellency. That way, the entire matter would be completely legal. I shall have the necessary papers drawn up and send them to you before sundown. Good. Your Excellency, I take my leave. Uh, you know your way to the streets, Senor? I'll go out as I came, through the garden. Mira! Senor Adverse! Anthony Adverse! Senorita Dolores! You are surprised. Surprised and... and greatly honored. I... I had no hope that I would meet you again so soon. Nor had I. I have thought much of you since that first meeting. It is good to hear such words from you, senor. One has a dream in one's mind. But when I saw you standing in the doorway of the cathedral, so tall, and your fine, proud head... And you... In your black mantilla, your face like a flame in the glow of the great stained glass windows. Yes, it was like a dream. But we are not a dream, senor. We are alive. And listen to us, how we flatter each other. <laughs> <laughs> Could I not see you later this evening? This evening? Alone. Alone? But there are many who come to serenade me from the outer garden. Senorita, my very heart sings to you. But, senor, it is to be observed. My windows do not open onto the outer garden, but onto this small private garden. Only, of course, no one can climb that wall. But if they did? Of course, if they did, they would find me waiting here. I will come, senorita, tonight. Tonight? Senor Chibo, when I returned from the governor's palace, I had a feeling that I was followed. In Havana, everyone is followed. That is one of the customs of this city. Oh? Well, what shall we do this evening? Relax on the patio. Oh, tonight I have other plans. Indeed? I have a rendezvous in a star-swept garden. Not the governor's niece. Aye, Dolores of the Fountain. You must be careful, Anthony. Oh? Take one with you for protection. 
should you meet any of the golden lady's other admirers. I can fend for myself. However, I will take one along to serenade the lady. Well, we have accomplished much today. You've gotten the papers which you needed for your voyage to Africa, and you have also become acquainted with the governor's niece. <laughs> All in one day. Now it is evening, and I return at midnight to the governor's palace. I have a rendezvous with the Golden Dolores. Juan, you will wait here on this side of the wall. Si, sí, senor. I will sing for you and the lady. You see, it was most fortunate that I brought my guitar. Ah, you rascal, most fortunate. Is there some particular song you wish me to sing? I leave the choice entirely to you. It shall be a very old love song. You say the lady is beautiful? As lovely as the night. Now, help me scale this wall. Clasp your hands together. Mm, so? So, I step upon them thus. Now, lift me up. Up. But I pull <sighs> myself up to the top of the wall. So. <sighs> and what do you see on the other side? Never mind what is on the other side. You may sing. I, senor, I sing. Eres como la rosa que hasta en el huerto. Anthony, you have come. Dolores. How can this be? I am in your arms, your breath is on my cheek, and yet you are singing to me from the other side of the wall. <laughs> I use one voice for serenading and another to whisper in your sweet ear. Anthony. We have only just met. And already I must leave you. Yes, my uncle has told me. Next week you sail to Africa. Promise you will not forget me until I return. Forget you? If I never see you again. Even if I'm lost at sea. If you are married and I cannot speak to you. Remember that I love you. I shall remember. Always. Even though our lips can never speak such words again. Still, we shall know. We shall know. If I can return to you, will you be here? Why do you say, if you can return? Much could happen on this African voyage. I know not what I am facing. Whenever you return, next month, next year, you will find me waiting. Dolores, my beloved. Anthony. What is that? That drum? You can hear it often in the quiet of the night. But where does it come from? I do not know. Far away. Perhaps from the hills or the other side of the island. The sound of a drum carries for many miles. It is a most Senorita, Nelita, you come see Mom Bibi. Mom Bibi, I come to you for help. What is it you seek? Oh, great wizard. There is a man recently arrived in Cuba. A man whom I love, but who has eyes for another, one with golden hair. You wish charm to make this man love you? I want a charm that will make him my slave. That will need powerful charm. I will pay you a purse of gold if you make this man give his affection to me instead of to the governor's niece. I will make charm. Thank you, Mom Billy. You are indeed a great wizard. Only before I can make charm, I must have something that is part of this man. A paring from his nail or a single hair from his head. I will bring it to you. The hair from his head. Do that. And I make small wax figure. Place hair from his head inside image. Then... He will be your slave forever. When I return from Africa, I shall come to your uncle and ask him for your hand. We shall be married in the great cathedral where our eyes first met. Oh, my beloved. But now I must go. 
But we shall meet again before you sail for Africa. Of course, I shall come to the governor's palace many times to discuss my plans with your uncle. You need make no plans, Senor Adver. What is this? Seize him! Hurt, Senor. Good! Good! He's no use, Senorita. We have already taken care of the guards and silenced the singer who stood outside the wall. Whoever you are, I am your prisoner. But I beg of you, do not harm the lady. Permit her to go free. We do not wish to harm the governor's niece. It is only you we want, Senor Adverse. We have been following you for days, waiting for this moment. Comrades, hold the Senorita for a few moments, then release her. Meantime, Senor Anthony Adverse will be our guest elsewhere. From Studio One at CBS, you are listening to Anthony Adverse by Hervey Allen, as arranged for radio by Vincent McConnor. Our story will resume after the customary pause for local station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Continuing Columbia's full-hour feature production from Studio One, Herbie Allen's adventure romance, Anthony Adverse. Star tonight, Clayton Collier, Mercedes McCambridge, and Miriam Wolfe. Senor Chabo, we are faced with a most curious situation. What is that, Your Excellency? Your friend, Senor Adverse, has been spirited away. When? By whom? A band of masked men in my garden. My niece was a witness. The rascals. Who are they? Where have they taken him? In answer to both questions, I do not know. They were masked and had locked all of my guards in one of the anterooms. So no one saw where they went. We must rouse all Havana. Call the commandant of police. For the past hour, the entire police force has been searching the city, and with no result. What of Anthony's companion, the young sailor, Juan? He, too, was spirited away. It is my fault. Anthony told me only this afternoon that someone was following him. I should have sent my servants along to guard him. What can we do, Your Excellency? What can we do? We can only wait and trust that the police will find some trace of him. Senor Edvers, can you hear me? Hi, Juan. Keep your voice down lest we be overheard. Where do you think they might be taking us? I know not. My eyes were blindfolded when they brought me aboard ship, so I could not even see her name. From the sound and the feel of her, she is a schooner. Bound for some unknown and faraway destination. I, I have been in chains before, but always for a reason. Why do you suppose we have prisoners here, senor? I know not, lad. All right. Unchain them and take them up to the deck. What are you going to do with us? Put you over the side in a small boat. Are you putting us ashore? Setting us adrift? Mm -hmm. You will see, senor. You will see. Senor Chabo. Uh, yes? Yes. Uh, what is it? I must have dozed off. The commandant of police has just reported. I. What has he found? No trace of them in the entire city. He has discovered no one who has even seen them. There is nothing more to be done. I could weep. Nothing. What about Senor Ferdinando? Ferdinando? Aye. Would it not be to his interest to spirit Senor Adverse out of sight? It would, Your Excellency. But it would also be impossible. Could he not hide Adverse in the hold of his ship, the Aerostatica, and take him to Africa when she sails? He could, indeed. But she does not sail before another week. Then let us go down to the docks and inspect his ship. Go down to the docks? In the middle of the night, I... I will go with you. But I have not been near the docks in years. Could you not tend to this alone without me? Come along, fat one. It will do you good. We must get there before dawn. Very well. I come reluctantly. Senor 
Senor Edgar. Hi, Juan. Do you know where we are? Quiet. No talking. Where are you taking us? I cannot tell you. This is like a wilderness. A jungle. But it must still be Cuba. There is some sort of a settlement up ahead. Well, soon it will be dawn. Then we will be able to discover our whereabouts. This way. He is leading us off the path. Aye. The others did not follow behind us. We could try to escape while his back is turned. Not a chance. They would shoot us down. We are going uphill. A steep hill. If only this early morning fog would lift. We could see what is in a distance. Hey, you. Open that door. It is a great wooden door in the side of the hill. We are putting you in our finest cell. <laughs> our finest. It is some sort of prison. Dug out of the side of the cliff. Without windows or ventilation. All right. In you go. And you swear, Senor Ferdinando, that you have seen nothing of my associate, Senor Adler? Nothing. Not since he came to my office. Uh, let me see. That, that must have been yesterday afternoon. Well, Senor Chibo, we have searched the ship without finding any trace of them. What is this? You wake me in the middle of the night, you rouse my crew and search my ship? By whose authority? By mine, as his Catholic Majesty's representative. Anthony Adverse and his servant were seized by a band of masked men in the very grounds of my palace. Such impertinence, Your Excellency. Right in the palace gardens, you say. Oh, but this is no concern of mine. Why have you searched my ship? To put it bluntly, because you are the one person in all of Havana who might profit through the disappearance of Senor Adverse. Juan, listen. We are about to have a guest. Old frog face again. This time let us surprise him. I will stand here behind the door and seize him as he enters. Careful, he may be armed. Quiet. I have him. I have You. It is a woman. Your arms enfold me, Senor Adverse. You are very strong. Neleta. See? Si? You remember my voice. Who is it, Senor? Senorita Neleta, sister of Don Ferdinando, the agent for Gallego and son. My man, Juan. Your servant, Senorita. Well, now, what is this all about? Come with me outside, both of you. A pleasure. Lead the way, Senorita. Take my hand. Your hand. Come along, Juan. I clutch the tail of your coat, senor. Senorita, how did you come here? Where did you get the key to our prison? I must talk quickly. Ah, it is a fine night. The air is sweet. Your guard eats his dinner. I had a duplicate key made to the door of your cell. Keep it. Let yourself in and out whenever the guard sleeps. Here, take it. But what are you doing here, senorita Naleta? Let us sit on the side of the hill here in the moonlight. Very well. The moonlight is very bright. I can even see the design of your necklace, senorita. And I can see a hair that has fallen onto your shoulder. Here, let me take a souvenir. So. Senorita, I should welcome an explanation of why you are here. I, too, am a prisoner. And where are we? This is Gallego's Reach, the estate of Senor Gallego's. My brother keeps me here. So? Ferdinando had you brought here in the night aboard the schooner Ariostatica. We sailed back to Havana and was anchored there before dawn to prevent anyone being suspicious. And we are still in Cuba. You well, see, si, but many miles down the coast from Havana. This is the place where my brother hides the slaves which he brings from Africa. Then what I have heard is true. See. Si. Every ship stops here before reaching Havana. The slaves are unloaded and the ship goes on to Havana with only a few poor ivory tusks in its hold. And that is an African drum we hear. I knew it. There is a guarded village in the valley with hundreds of African natives, all waiting for ships to carry them into bondage. Why do you tell me this? Perhaps I am ashamed of my brother. Perhaps I would like to be rescued, senor. What can we do? You must remain here at least for the present. A prisoner. Senor. I, Juan. Guard returns. Up the hill. And you must hurry back to your cell. Lock yourselves in, lest you suspect. We will see you again. Tomorrow. Good night, senorita. Good night, Anthony Adverse. Good night, 
Thank you for this souvenir. I shall preserve your hair in a locket. Mom Bibi, where are you, Mom Bibi? Emperor, Senorita Nereta. I have brought it a hair from his head. Now I will make for you the charm. Give me the hair. Give it in this ivory box. Uh, good. Sit here. I make charm. I turn man into your slave. My slave. My slave. <laughs> Elisha. We got a visitor, ma'am. A visitor? Come specially to see you. In here, senorita. Watch she don't bump your pretty head. Gracias, Captain Joram, gracias. Oh, land sakes, a girl at the cathedral. She's a girl at the cathedral? Dolores, that's your name, ain't it? See, si, I am Dolores. Well, now, well, where is Mr. Adverse? Ain't the rascal with you? Senor Adverse has been kidnapped. What are you saying? The true Mrs. Joram. He and his man. That should be one, the young sailor. See, they have both disappeared. It happened night before last. The police have searched the entire city many times, but there is no trace of him. I am most distraught. Lem, six. I have come to you hoping that you will help me, you and Captain Joram. He told me that you were his friend. That we are. Then you must help me to find him. I have been to everyone else. Now I fear for his life. <laughs> Insert the key and... Our one key will not work all the locks? It fits one. It fits. We'll investigate this next cell. We may have a neighbor. Careful, senor. I turn the key so... Is there no sound within the cell? I hear nothing. Ah, it is unlocked. Now, open the door. There we are. There is someone inside. Wait here. I will go into the cell. Careful, senor. Watch for our guard. He'll be returning. Aye, senor. Is that you... Mon Bibi? My name is Adverse. Oh. Senor Adverse. I am a prisoner in the next cell. Aye. My strength is weak, or I would have signaled to you through the wall. I knew you were brought here yesterday, and I was glad, because I knew that you would be a friend. Friend? I cannot see you in the dark. Do I know you, senor? Who are you? My name is Gallego. <laughs> Father and I, in the dark of the night, just as they brought you. I recognized the voice of Ferdinando when they seized us. Ferdinando, I thought as much. Aye. They left us here and took the ship back to Havana, so that it would be anchored there at dawn. No one would trace us here. What of your father? He was not young. They let him die. Why they have bothered to feed me, I do not know. We will escape, Senor Gallego. My man and I will help you to get away from this place. Senorita Neleta will aid us. Senorita Neleta. Aye, it was she who brought me the key with which I opened my cell. Beware of Neleta. She declares she too is a prisoner of Ferdinando. It's the other way above. What? Ferdinando obeys her commands. It is she who is running the slave trade. It was all her plan. Then why did she give me this key? Apparently she wants you to be grateful to her. In or dead. You may be certain she has a reason. Senor, someone come. Is the guard returning? I must go. You will come again, Senor Adverse? Aye, we must plan a way Senor, to... we are lost. It is a strange figure coming this way, through the night. What is that sound? I know not, Senor. It is like the ringing of many small bells. Senor Gallego, why does your door stand open? It is Mombibi, a witch doctor. Who are these people? Senor Adverse and this man. Senor Adverse, we finally meet. I have heard much of you. Since your arrival, Senorita Neleta believes Mombibi to be a witch doctor. Actually, he is an educated man and our friend. Tell me, is it Neleta who rules here? She is the one. A cunning woman with an unexpected strain of savagery and superstition. We must act. We must develop a plan of escape. I will take you to the hilltop and you will see the slave camp. <laughs> Spread out 
below us is the Gallego estate. That is the great house to the right, where Senorita Neleta lives with her brother. What is the large building? It is a great storage house, filled with stolen cargo. That is the slave quarter to the left? It spreads out across the valley. The slaves are chained there. Beautiful Neleta walks among them with a whip. And you? What causes you to be here? Mine is a strange story, senor. I was educated in Europe. When I finished school, I sailed back to my home in Africa. But the ship was attacked by pirates. After many adventures, I ended here, a slave. I have played upon this strange woman's superstition, and that has made it possible for me to help my fellow slaves. I hope someday to set them free. And I will help you. What is Nelator's purpose? She has conceived a wild passion for you. She had me make a wax image in your likeness. An image? It is supposed to be a charm which will make you her slave. She brought me a hair, a hair from your own head to place within the image. She actually thinks that a spell has been cast upon me? Aye, senor. That is what she thinks. Oh, oh. this uh, promises to be most intriguing. <laughs> Night such as one sees in Spain, Senor Adverse. Aye, Senorita. The sky spills stars across the land. Here is the place I wish to show you. I have noticed this building from the hill. Your eyes will be dazzled by what they are about to see. Follow me, Antony Adverse. I will disclose a treasure beyond the dream of men. This way. These, these caskets and chests, they, they bulge with gold. In this chest are rubies, pearls, emeralds. And emperor's treasure. Look, senor, look at them. These are diamonds. Great tusks of ivory hang from the ceiling, and this next room is filled with more golden coins. All of this treasure can be yours, Anthony. Yours and mine. Mine, senorita? With it, you and I could be very happy, yes? Senorita. Anthony. I am a passionate woman, and I am also an ambitious woman. I am making plans for us, you and I, and for all this treasure. And what is your plan? My brother returns tomorrow evening. A schooner Ariostatica will pause here before it sails to Africa. I have a plan. <laughs> you will see my handsome one. Tomorrow night, you will help me bring that plan to reality. Oh, Antony. Senorita. Kiss me. Nileta. I am your slave. My slave. <laughs> Self said he was my slave. Are you surprised, senorita? I am pleased. Your charm has worked to perfection, Mon Bibi, and you will find that I am most grateful. I am certain of that, senorita. My brother's ship stops here tonight, and I have plans. That drum you hear, senorita, it tells me that your brother's ship will dock just after nightfall. Then all is well. Mon Bibi, you are certain that Senor Adverse will obey my every command without hesitation. You need only order him, and he will obey. I shall order him tonight. <laughs> It is her faith in the powers of evil, Senor Adverse, that Nelita is convinced you are a slave who will obey her every command. The lady will presently find otherwise. She has something planned for tonight, something which concerns her brother. I am ordered to join her for dinner without Juan. That leaves Juan free to help us in another direction. And what is that? Senorita Nelita heard the drum beating. I told her it announced the arrival of her brother's ship. I did not tell her that it said another ship was also approaching, an American ship. American? 
What is its name? Uh, that I know not. One must row out to meet it. I will send two slaves with him, our fastest oarsmen. Can they row, their arms and legs chained together? I, do have a key, Senor Adverse. Tonight every slave will find his ankle free of chains. Then tonight we must escape. All of us. Senor Gallego and all of the slaves. Aye, Senor. Tonight we escape. And our first step is to send Juan off to meet the American ship. Very well. Come. Juan will journey down the river. Then you will go to the big house for dinner. When you hear the drums, many drums, you will know the slaves are free. My pet too much, Senor Adverse. You will spoil him. Even as you spoil me, <laughs> Senorita. My dear sister, should we not be alone to discuss business? Presently, Ferdinando. There is much time. But the schooner sails before dawn. We will talk later. Now another glass of wine. Very well. One more glass. I wonder why the drums are silent tonight. Whoever knows why the drums are beaten or why they are silent... Mon Bibi never explains, and someday I shall have him beaten. Why do you not come with me on this voyage, dear sister? I sail to Africa. You would enjoy the sea air. It might even sweeten your temper. Ferdinando, you <laughs> have had too many glasses of wine. So, my apologies, Senor Adverse. You, no doubt, have worries, Senor Ferdinando. You hold no grudge at my abducting you and bringing you here? Quite the contrary. I have been most happy here. How can anyone be happy in this place? It breeds evil like a swamp. Ferdinando, you talk too much. And my dear sister, she is the dark queen of this evil place. Have you had your charm made, Meleta? Is he your slave, dear sister? I will show you, Antony Adverse. I, senorita? You are my slave. Of course. Then take this gun. Point it at my brother. Yes. Aim it directly at his head. His head. You are my slave, Anthony Adverse. You will obey my every command. Every command. Ferdinando, I have no further use for you. I have plans. You are not included in my plans. Ah. Another glass of wine. Foolish brother. Even as we sit here, the treasure of gold and jewels is being loaded aboard the schooner. Anthony and I are heading off to another land. And you, Ferdinando, you are going to die. What are you, you saying? You are about to die, you die, great I stupid. I do not understand. Shoot him, Anthony. Pull the trigger. Why do you not obey me? You are my slave! Forgive me, senorita. I am not your slave. What are you saying? Do not move, Nelita. The gun is now pointed straight at you. But you must obey me. You must... The, the witch doctor made an image of you. <laughs> see, see here, I keep it on my person. An image of you, Anthony Adverse. An image which makes you my slave. <laughs> it is you, not your brother, who is the greater fool. Mombibi is my friend and no <laughs> witch doctor. Even as we talk, he is freeing the slaves. Ferdinando! Ferdinando, wake up! I need you! Is you Ferdinando! Waited your brother to drink too much. You thought to have me kill him. Instead, I point the gun at you. You are my slave. You must obey me. Point the gun at Ferdinando. Point it at you. What is that? Unless I am mistaken, senorita, it is a ship's cannon. <laughs> You are safe. I, I was thrown to the floor near an open window. I escaped. I was coming back for you as soon as I could get Senor Gallego to safety. What of Nilet and her brother? The house was struck by a cannonball and set afire. Both perished in the flames. And my people have won their freedom. Aye, we are all free. They are going now in boats, rowing south to a friendly land. Mom Bibi, you will come with us. I am Mom Bibi. I will give you a position with my firm in Havana. Then I come, and gladly. 
Senor Edmonds. Senor Edmonds. Here we are, Juan. You are safe, Senor. You met no harm. Oh, we are all safe. But what of the American ship, Juan? Is it a friendly ship? Aye, it is the American ship that fires volleys across the beach. You are friends aboard her. Come, we will join them. By all means. Ship lively there. Help him aboard. Captain Joram, is it really you? Aye, lad. To say you come to your rescue. There are others waiting to see you. Anthony. You are quite safe. Senor Chivo, you have come far from your patio. I have not used my leg so much in 20 years. <laughs> are you unharmed? Unharmed and returning to Havana with young Gallego. Gallego, alive? And with a treasure of gold and precious stones. Then the Gallego debt to your guardian will at last be paid. Aye, the treasure is stored in the hold of that other ship. Well, land sakes, there's others that want to greet the land. Mrs. Joram, <laughs> this woman is a monster. Oh, oh, oh. It is she who dragged me here. <laughs> lad, I'm so happy to see you. I, I could kiss you. Well, then. Well, I just think I will. <laughs> Mrs. Joram, you surprised me. Well, surprise myself. Now get along with you. <laughs> Anthony. Anthony, I said. Dolores. It was her idea to follow that other ship here. She was the one who come to Captain Elisha and me. Well, go ahead, lad. You kissed me. Now ain't you going to kiss her? Oh, I am. Indeed. Anthony. Dolores. Hi. Oh, I feared we would never meet again. And I knew that we would. Do you not remember the little angel of the cathedral and the small white dog? I... Lovers who meet there will find happiness. This is a legend, my Anthony, from the heart of love. From Studio One at CBS, you have just heard Fletcher Markle's production of Anthony Adverse by Herbie Allen. Another full-hour Columbia feature from the pages of the world's great storytellers. Tonight's script was prepared especially for this series by Vincent McConnor of the CBS Division of Program Writing. And the original musical score was composed by Lana Domian and conducted by Alexander Semler. Now again, Mr. Markle. May a producer introduce the principals in our cast tonight. In the foreground... Anthony Adverse. ...was played by Clayton Collier. Dolores. ...was Mercedes McCambridge. Neleta. ...was Miriam Wolfe. Carlo Chibo. ...was played by Danny Occo. Ferdinando. ...was Joseph Conway. Juan. ...was Ronnie Liss. Captain Joram. And Mrs. Joram. ...were Ian McAllister and Elsie Mae Gordon. Mom Bibi. ...was played by Robert Dryden. Actively assisting were Hedley Rennie, John Merlin, Gregory Morton, Louis Quinn, and John Seymour. The Spanish songs were sung by Nino Ventura. Next week, we're going to visit that changing yet unchanging land of the six-gun, the ranch owner's daughter, and the disappearing mortgage. Where men are men, and dust is bitten like a suspicious coin, and smile when you say anything, partner. Our story is Max Brand's unusual novel, Singing Guns. So if anyone wants to know where we are next week, point to the Wild West and say they went that way. We hope you'll be with us. And now until next week in Singing Guns by Max Brand, this is Fletcher Markle with a good night and thank you from all of us in Studio One. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site where we put out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. 
Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Collier uh, does a good job on this. I also liked Mercedes McCambridge. Uh, Those of you who've been listening to the program for quite a while will remember Miss McCambridge from her role in the lead on Defense Attorney. She did a good job creating a character with a very different voice. And there was just a hint of of her normal voice which is definitely an achievement because her uh, regular voice is very distinctive uh, over radio. And I also love the sound design. There's just a lot of care put into making this uh, sound uh, superb. And this is a cut above what you would typically hear uh, on a regular radio drama. And of course, uh, Studio One uh, would actually go on to become a big uh, CBS TV anthology that aired a lot of live programming. It was probably the most successful of those, though the ties to the radio show are somewhat tenuous. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Join us back here tomorrow for Night Beat. Uh, in the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.